until 1.4 beta 4 is now out and it is the final beta version until the release candidate versions start to come out. And along with that, I've made some changes to my pre-processing scripts that I'll go over with you today. This video will cover the Smart Telescope pre-processing script and I do have some changes coming out for the OSC pre-processing script as well. And in this video, I'll cover some of the changes as well as do two different demos that I think will cover most of the workflows that people use. Since this script is flexible, there are more workflows that you can actually follow, but I'll just show you two of the more important ones that I think that will be more relevant to everyone. If you want to support this channel further, consider checking me out on Patreon and buy me a coffee. There is a free tier on Patreon, and I do make all of my scripts available early for beta testing to everyone there. Now let's talk a little bit about the updates. So the script looks slightly different, and that's because it was redone using a different frameworks but the functionality and the options that you see are mostly the same. The biggest change that you probably see when you open the script for the first time is that you have access to additional settings in the other pre-processing script section right in the middle. The most obvious one is the ability to control the number of images that this can batch for you. In the previous version, I made it so that the script will batch any kind of any images, any sessions with more than 2048 files. I locked it on 2000 because it's a nice even number to work with. And a couple of people asked, hey, can I have control over that? And so here you have control over it. You can go as little as 100 frames all the way up to 2000 frames. Another obvious change that you see in the pre-processing section is that now you have the ability to control a couple of filter options, the roundness and the weighted full width half max. In the previous version, I had the roundness value hard-coded as 2.5. So these are sigma values. I do put the prefixes on the right side. So it's a sigma value and not the roundness value. So if you put three, it's three standard deviations. It'll catch about 99.8% or whatever the math comes out to. So it'll pretty much get all files. Previously, I had defaulted to 2.5. So you can play around with this if you, had, if you see that your stacks have like elongated stars or something. Full with half max, the weighted full with half max was not available in the script in the previous version, but it is now if you want to play with that as well. If you don't want to use this filter options, either don't check that box or leave the sigma values at three. And the last noticeable change you see in the UI is at the bottom, we have the load and save presets buttons. So if you use the script over and over again, you check all these boxes, select your telescope, select your drizzle factor, your filter values. So you don't have to do that anymore. You can save all of your presets and it'll save in a JSON file. And if it's available, you can click load, it'll load for you automatically. And the last change that you don't really see on the surface level because it's happening in the back end is that this script can now support master frames. So it will both create master frames and it will support you support taking master frames. So if you have the dark frame that you take like with the Dwarf 3 or if you're using C-Star ALP, you can use those frames and this script will process them. The way it works is that if you have just one of those frame types in that particular folder, such as one dark frame in the darks folder, you'll treat it as a master frame, even if it's not a master frame. But if you provide it with multiple frames, such as 10 dark frames, this script will actually create a new folder called masters and put the master, for, master dark frame and the master flat frame in there so that you can reuse it later on. And before we get to the demo, I wanna mention that if you need help, if you have questions about this, if you get errors, you can ask in the comments below, but a better way would be to reach out to me on Discord. There's an invite link is in the description below. Also check me out on Patreon and buy me a coffee as I mentioned earlier. So let's get to the two demos and see if I can answer all of your questions for you before you even have them. All right, quickly going through the demo. So this is going to be on serial 1.4.0 beta 4. And to get the script, now the menu has moved to scripts, get scripts, and there's a search bar so you can search for an astronomy. And it's going to be the smart telescope preprocessing.py script. I'm also working on a version for oscpp.py. So if you don't already have this selected, click select, click apply. And as of today, there is a new version, so you'll get version 1 or 2.0.0. So if you go to Python scripts, preprocessing, and you click on Smart Telescope PP, you'll make sure that you're running version 2.0.0. For the remainder of this demo, since I recorded this before this was pushed to Cyril, you'll see version 1.2.0. But again, the official version is 2. And I'll go through the workflow a couple of times to show you the different things that can happen. So first thing is first, I am going to open my directory here and I'll show you that I have a lights directory and nothing else. This is from a C star S30, M31. I have some old results here from my old testing and then lights.zip is just this zipped up. And we'll have all of our process directories 
opening up here. Now this window looks familiar again. Uh, the telescope, you will choose what you want. It defaults to S50, but you can choose S30. If you have calibration frames, you select what you need. These are all optional. If you click cleanup files, it'll clean up all the intermediary files, but I will uncheck this for this first round because I want to show you what those files are. Max files per batch is a new option. It was requested by a Clattery Nice member who likes to stack, I don't know, like five or 10 minutes worth of images and keeps them for future references. So you have the option to go from 100 to 2000. So you can't go below 100 and you can't go above 2000. And this is only on Windows. So if you are on a Mac or Linux, this option is purely is fully ignored. Uh, I may choose to hide this in a future version, depending on the feedback, or if you're a Mac and Linux user and you want to have access to Mac files per batches, let me know in the comments below, join discord and let me know there. And I can figure that out as well. Background extraction. You'll do the, that. This hasn't changed. Same with drizzle, you know, drizzle amount, pixel fraction. Again, I always say that I like 0 0.90. One thing to know is that if you have background extraction and drizzle checked, at the same time, currently in beta four, there is a bug with C stars where the output file will look a little weird. The red and blue channels get swapped. So what I do to work around that is that you'll get the original stack and you'll also get a swapped red and blue stack. And I'll show you what that looks like after this is done. That is fixed in the next release candidate one version. So you, you won't have to deal with this in a future version, but this is just a bug that exists in beta four. This didn't exist in beta three either. So if you're still on beta three, you're okay. Filters option is new. This is based on my OSE pre-processing script where I give you access to roundness and the weighted FWHM values to filter out. So if you have, if you're worried that you're, you have lots of elongated stars, you can play with the roundness value. These are Sigma values. And what that means is that it goes, you know, three standard deviations from the mean and standard deviation of three will give you just about everything. It's like 99.8% of files before this in the previous version, I had that hard coded as 2.5. So that would give you about 95% of the best files. And I didn't have weighted FWHM at all. So if you don't want, any of these filters to do anything, you can either uncheck it or, you know, leave them at three. It'll give you the exact same thing. Feather, there was still a bug previously where if you feather, you might get errors. This is something that I have not been able to reproduce at all. So if you get errors when you, if you feather on, turn it off and background extraction should help a lot with any kind of artifacts that you see, but do report those. And the SPCC hasn't changed at all. Recommend local Gaia. If you use online Gaia, you're going to have problems. So in the future, I may disable this if you don't have local Gaia at all. So, so for now, pretty simple. This is what I have. And on the bottom, we have two new buttons. We have save presets and load presets. So what happens is that you can actually save presets and it'll save all the checkboxes, your telescope, your calibration frames, all of these values in a JSON file. If you click on load presets, if you have the JSON file that exists in that folder, it'll load it. But if you don't have it, if you click on load, it'll actually ask you to find the JSON file. So you can have your JSON file, your, your presets predefined in, a, in like a presets folder somewhere else, and you can load it whenever you need it. But if I click on save presets in the console, you'll see that it says it saved presets to a presets directory. NASA Army Smart Scope presets.json. So if I open up my directory here, you'll see that a presets directory got created. And here, if I open, open a notepad, so it just saves the JSON of all of the values that are in the UI. So now if I, I'll close this, and if I go back to Cyril here, if I were to close this by accident, or you know, I'm, let's say I finished it, I want to redo it, I go back and click on load presets. A load presets will first look inside the presets directory. If that exists and a JSON file exists, it will actually find that. So it won't ask you. So if I click load presets, so it just like loaded everything for me, right? I didn't have to do anything, which is kind of cool. All right. So those are the values, you know, the help. There's some help that changes. Uh, well, some of the text was changed. It also gets outputted here. Okay, great. So now I'll just run this and we'll see what that looks like. All right, that ended and so I'll just auto stretch this now and I'll show you that. So 
this looks kind of blue, right? And that's because the blue and red channels got flipped. And if you look at the logs, you'll see some extra items that says checking if color channel swap is needed. So it's checked to see if the if you have a C star, if you have drizzle true and background extraction true. So if you have background extraction or drizzle checked, it will be okay. It's just when you're trying to do both of them at the same time is when you'll have issues. So then it swaps the red and blue channels and you, and this is the OG file. So if I look at the pre in my directory here, I have two files. I have the original file and I have the RB swapped file. So this is what I've done there. So I can open this up, click open. And now M31 looks better. Now you can run SPCC on this. So if you're on a C star, I would recommend not doing SPCC from the script for the moment until the next version comes out and this bug is fixed. And then switch to the RB swapped and then work with that. This does not seem to happen for dwarf two or dwarf three scopes from my testing. But if you run into that, let me know. Right now I'm only doing this extra step for C stars. So this is pretty straightforward. So now I'm gonna run it again with some dwarf data that has darks. So I'm going to click this. Right, looking at my dwarf three directory here that I'll be testing with, there's a bunch of familiar directories such as biases. These aren't true biases, so I won't actually check that box. I have darks. These are true darks, so I will be using darks for this session. These are not true flats and we have lights and ignore the old directory and I have presets that I did for my testing that I will actually just pull in. And so I'll open up this. So this already opened here and then I'll click on load presets. So you can see that it you know, changed telescopes and selected everything that I needed, including feather, it's doing SBCC as well. I'm actually going to turn off SBCC because I don't want to do that right now. And if I look at my lights directory, I have 144 items. So I am actually going to changes to 100 so that it batches so you'll get two batches this is if you had like 4,000 files you'd keep it at 2,000 let it do two batches for you so now if I click on save presets this will actually override the presets that are here so I can open this in notepad you'll see that batch size is now 100 okay so I will now run this and while that's running, we'll look here. We'll see that a process directory exists and then batch lights one, batch lights two. It's copying all those files over. Uh, one thing while this is happening is that I've had people ask me, can we turn this into sim links instead of copying? Yeah, I tested this quite extensively. When it does this and then it, and then it tries to run things in the process directory, it tries to create sim links of sim links and then I have issues on Windows. It may work better in other operating systems, but since Windows is what I use, is what I know that a lot of people use this. I've decided to leave sim links out of this. So, all right, that completed. And if you look at the logs, it says checking if swap is needed. You can see that it doesn't actually do a swap. If I look here, there is no swap file. It just has the bash lights files. So each of these lights, this is 100 images and this is uh, 40. So actually, because of projection and other issues, only 75 got stacked here and 40 got stacked here. So instead of 44 and 100. So something to keep in mind if you're trying to figure out um, which batch number works for you because things do get rejected for one reason or another. Then you also notice that a masters directory got created. And here I have the darks masters created. So because I only had dark files, it created darks, it gives you the exposure time. And if there is a temperature, it'll also include that here, but the dwarf doesn't seem to save that. So there you have it. That is the script. I don't think I forgot to cover anything, but if you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. Join our Discord server and find me on both Buy Me A Coffee and on Patreon. I hope that was useful. Huge thanks to everyone who's helped me test this in both alpha and beta testing and for any kind of feedback that I've gotten. If you have requests for future updates or if you see any bugs, let me know. I will be more than happy to take a look at them. Now I'm gonna go finish updates to my OSC pre-processing script and I'm excited about some of the updates I'm making there. So stay tuned for that. Until next time, clear skies. Thank you.